So this is the first proper video in the new place, so um, let's get stuck in. So this is the first episode of a little thing that I'm doing. I'm basically going to build things from scratch. We're going to start from the bottom, which is actually the case that you put synth modules in. I need to build some new ones because I need slightly larger ones to take on tour. So this is a video about making a synthesizer case for my kind of dimensions, which is actually 20 centimeter high panels, which doesn't really fit within the 3U or the 5U, you know, like Moog or Eurorack or things like that. But there's no reason why you can't adjust the measurements and make it work for those. I'm doing these ones 120 centimeters wide. That's like over a meter. They're gonna be pretty big and they're gonna be 40 centimeters tall, which means they fit two 20 centimeter panels on top of each other. So I cut these bits of wood out using a circular saw, but usually I go to an off cut place with a little piece of paper saying, have you got any bits of wood this size? And they usually cut it to size for me for free. So basically what it is, is it's four bits of 18 millimeter wide plywood that's for the actual outside box. And for the back, you've got a nine millimeter piece of plywood. So it's slightly thinner, so it's a little bit lighter for when you're kind of lugging it around the world. You know, maybe not in airplanes, maybe it's a bit too big, but you never know. Basically, it's gonna look like this. We've got a board on the top. Yeah, no, but we've got a board on the side. We've got a board on the other side. Uh, and we've got a board on the bottom. And then there's a board back. That's going to go like that. These middle ones are going to be 40 centimeters high by 20 centimeters wide. These top ones need to take into account the width of these middle ones, so they're going to have to be two centimeters on each side wider to make sure that the 18 millimeter ply fits in there and you've got like two millimeters of play inside the box. It's good to be safe. So this one for me is going to be 124 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters. So the 20 centimeters is so the whole case is 20 centimeters deep. And then the back, you want it to be to take into account of the whole back part. So you're taking into account the width of these now. It's going to be 44 centimeters by 124 centimeters. So those are the different dimensions that you're going to need for this. I'm going to bash these together. There's no point them looking pretty with fancy joints and stuff because in the end of the day, this is a tool and tools are made to be used, not to look pretty. Even though they do look pretty in their kind of brutal like kind of way. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a screwdriver with a little drill bit, which is going to make pilot holes. And I'm going to put pilot holes on the top of these planks. No need for measurements because measurements, we all know, are for crazy people and mathematicians. Twist it around. It's as easy as that. Now you're ready to mount the sides. Just gotta find some screws. They don't need to match. There we go, those will do. Get a bit of PVA glue. Squirt it on there matter if it's too much because who cares. Drill your side, panels in. There's one side done already. Bit of glue, bit too much. And you turn it around and you get the other sides. Plop them on there. Bit of glue. Yeah. The funny thing is, this back piece, I only had a bit of plywood that was about a centimetre too short. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit short on the back, but whatever. A squirt a bit of glue on there. I'm not going to bother drilling pilot holes. One more little thing to do before we actually put the rails in is to find a space to put the power input in. So I'm gonna drill a hole to put a jack socket. There will do. And there we go. Now it's time to add the rails. I'm going with wooden rails because why would you not? Because it just costs nearly nothing. So the middle one is about 1.5 centimeters wide, which means you can mount two modules on top of each other on it. 
and the thinner ones are for the bottoms and the tops and basically what these are about just under a centimetre so you can literally just screw screws into it that hold your modular in place so this is probably the most complicated part of it all basically what we got to do we've got to mount them so on and this is probably the only measurements that we're ever going to have to do is having it seven centimetres in working out where to drill the holes from the outside so we can pop it in The next step is my favourite step, which is the painting. And the reason it being my favourite is because it kind of covers up all of the mistakes. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. But what's better than one, two? There we go. Whew. And what's better than two? Go. So now we've got to add the power supply. So the power supply is a little bit different to your normal 9 volt battery thing that you plug into the wall that you usually plug other musical electrical things into. So these require a plus 12 volts, a minus 12 volts and a ground. The ground in the middle is a centre tap between the two and if you lick that it doesn't hurt. But if you lick the top and the bottom ones, you'll definitely feel a tingle. So how do we put a power supply into this? Well, there's many ways to do it. There's lots of different companies that make already made power supplies from Bifaco who have these long, thin power supplies. But how I'm going to do it is the way I always do it, which is using this Frequency Central FC Power DIY PCB. Basically what it is, is this takes an AC current, you know, the up and down, and it splits it, so you've got a positive and a negative 12 volts with a ground in the middle. So yeah, let's solder one of these up. Sorry for the messy fingers, but there's been a lot of painting and cutting today. All of this information is on the Frequency Central website, but you know, just to show you how easy it is, you know, there's just not much going on. I've built some more. Woo! There we go. I've got five, but I've only got three cases, but two of the cases have two rows and one of them has one row. So that's five rows in total. And my kind of rule of thumb is I have one per row. So the great thing is you can hook these up to the same power plugs. So the two wires coming from the power plugs can be soldered to both of them in parallel. Okay, so we've got two and they're connected to the same jack, which is gonna be the power socket. As I said, it's not the best choice for plugging power into, but it kind of, kind of, it just makes it stay in there so it doesn't get pulled out accidentally when you're playing a show, which is what I like. I've also made these very simple kind of like bus boards. And what these do is they take the power and distribute it across to all the modules. All it is is a long thin piece of strip board and some pin headers and that just goes like this to the end of that. There we go. Well, at least it works. Now I've got to transplant all of the synthesizer modules that I've got in my old touring synth into here and then build on it more so I've got more stuff to take with me. So I hope that was of help. There's links in the description of most of the things that I've been talking about. This is the start of a little series that I'm working on that I'm going to start building modules in videos. So I guess the next one is going to be the base level module which is an oscillator I guess. So hopefully in a month or so you'll be seeing the next episode of this series and it should be uh, oscillator. I still haven't fully sorted out the reverb in this room, so I'm sorry if it sounds like it's a massive cavernous concrete room. Well, that's because it is. These three cases cost me a maybe about 100 quid to make, but remember that's a massive case, so 100 quid sounds pretty cheap when you think of how big it is. 
And yeah, thanks. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. There's a live stream coming up within the week. And there's a few giveaways happening in a couple of weeks as well. And yeah, I kind of update it pretty much every day. Because I'm working on a couple of quite expensive projects at the minute. And yeah, they're quite interesting. And there's some information over on the Patreon on those already. But you might not see them for a little while because they're costing a pretty penny. So if you want to support even just a little bit, even a quid, that would help out a lot with these projects that are coming up because they're pretty big. I've been looking at my computer. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week.